is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. welcome you to church on this day. Uh, today we will be offering Holy Mass in the contemporary rite. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for God's forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you glory in your Son Jesus, who wondrously transfigured before his chosen disciples. Change us into him as, into his image, that we willingly bear our cross we may be strengthened by his saving words. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amen. On this, the second Sunday of Lent, we take the first reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test he called out to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your only beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by this, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in the descendants of all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. 
All this because you obeyed my command, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm for this day, the response is, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said I am greatly afflicted, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant, I am your servant, the son of your handmaiden. You have loosened my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, all Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul, the apostle to the Romans, Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over to us all, how will he not give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus. It is who died, or rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The track for this evening, or for today, his divine power has bestowed on us everything that makes for life and devotion, though the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and power. Through these he has bestowed on us the precious and very great promises, so that through them you may come to share in the divine nature, after escaping from the corruption that it is in the world because of evil desires. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily profess his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said, to Jesus and reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, Listen to him. Suddenly, around, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter in to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Words taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Words taken from the first letter of St. John, the beloved apostle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. In today's first reading, taken from the book of Genesis, we read about Abraham. The life story of Abraham, late Abram, later called Abraham, is quite remarkable. God had chosen Abraham to be the father of a great nation, as written in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. The interesting fact to all of this is that Abraham was 75 years of age when God told this to Abram. Later we read that Abraham wondered how this might be possible since he and his wife Sarai were childless. Since Sarah was also up in her years, Abram impregnated Sarai's slave, Hagar, and she gave birth to a son, Ishmael, who would be the father of all Arabs and Muslim peoples. Abraham was 86 years of age when Ishmael was born. But God was not done with Abraham. Now in Genesis 17, God says to Abraham that a son will be born to him and Sarai, later Sarah. It is written that Abraham joked within himself and questioned when he asked, how can a man who is 100 years of age and a wife who is 90 years of age still be able to have a child? God says to Abraham, your wife Sarah will bear a son and you will call him Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant and for his descendants after him. I am sure that Abraham saw the birth of Isaac as the fulfillment of God's promise to him. But on one day we read that God said to Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. There you will sacrifice him as a burnt offering. On the mountain I will show you. And so Abraham and Isaac, who is about eight years of age, travels to a spot that God directed them on Mount Moriah. There Abraham prepares a fire for a burnt sacrifice and intends to sacrifice his son. But before Isaac is sacrificed, the angel of the Lord, his messenger, tells Abraham not to harm his son Isaac. And then Abraham finds a ram who is sacrificed unto God instead of his only begotten son Isaac. In the second reading for today, taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, we read that God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. We recall that there are two times in the New Testament when the voice of God is heard and who speaks about his beloved son in whom he is well pleased and how it is important. 
for them to hear. The first time is at the baptism of Jesus. When Jesus came out of the waters after being baptized by John. And the second time is at his transfiguration, which we read in today's gospel, that was witnessed by Peter, James, and John, his inner circle. These two events, the baptism and the transfiguration of Jesus, confirms his divinity and his relationship with God. In the three years of the ministry of Jesus, Jesus manifests the power of God through his healings and the wisdom of God through his teachings. But God was not finished with his only begotten Son. There was to be a sacrifice in line with the story of Abraham and Isaac. And for Jesus, he was to become the Paschal Lamb. And his sacrifice was not to take place on an altar, but rather found on a cross. The intense love of God to his only begotten Son was to be fully manifested to all mankind at Jesus' crucifixion. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, we read of the depth that God had for his Son and also the depth of love that God has for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We further read in John that God did not son, send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but rather to save the world through him. This Lenten season, my brothers and sisters, let us pause for a moment and reflect on the words of the great spiritual hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Paul asks in his letter to the Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? He reminds his readers that Christ Jesus is the one who died or who was raised and who also works at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. My dear brothers and sisters, just as God put Abraham to a test of his faith that day, so doesn't our Heavenly Father put us to a test of our faith, that when we are troubled, when we see and suffer sickness, illness, and all the other things that come our way, we are reminded of a promise that our blessed Lord gave. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. May we, during this Lenten season, grow stronger in our faith and commitment to follow Christ this Lenten holy time. May we come to know and experience the depth of God's love for us, his forgiveness and his compassion, which is beyond all human comprehension. Let the final words to the verse, the final verse to the hymn, 
when I survey the wondrous cross, remind us of this love. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thrones compose so rich a crown, were the whole realm of nature mine, that were present far too small? Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. On this day, let us offer these intentions unto God and ask with the response, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, that God would be merciful and would bless those who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, as well as for their families, that God would be merciful and compassionate and give blessings upon those brothers and sisters who are sick and the support of their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day and we thank God for all the doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers who fight daily to save others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This day we remember and we pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence both here and abroad. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who serve in our armed forces that God would watch over them through his holy angels and return them to their homes safe and sound. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Polish National Catholic Church, its bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as all parishes, especially holy name of Jesus, that God would send forth his spirit Renew and bring his, his love to us to a greater degree. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for one another that as we love one another as Jesus taught us, that we see our Lord in the lives of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Come, says my heart. Seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. 
Do not hide your face from me. Do not repel your servant in anger. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become our spiritual drink. O oh Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through this holy oblation, may we who in faith perceive the mystery of the transfiguration enter into the fellowship of his sufferings. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whole hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. As we commemorate these 40 days of Lent, the 40 days of fasting of your Son. May we together with him give glory. Therefore, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, and not in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh, 
In him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross, and by rising restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed, to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen. He took bread into his hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks, he blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. Your return in glory, we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set the sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May we always remain and receive from your heavenly altar. Be united with you together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world, granting unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and uni unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My dear brothers and sisters, may the peace and love of Christ come within all our hearts at this moment. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Today I will offer the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, Free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer up the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. that which we have taken as food. And may the gifts we have received this day bring us healing and strength now and forever. Amen.
For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, in the glorious transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the witness of the prophets and foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Grant that we, who have shared at your altar, may become co-heirs with Christ and partakers in his glory. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you. And may the grace of God bring us ever closer through His Son. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day and proclaim that indeed we allow ourselves to be guided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, God our Heavenly Father, and through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. and sisters, again I welcome you as we offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and as we have offered the intentions during this Holy Mass. I pray that God's blessings might be upon all of you this day, your family and your loved ones. May we ever be faithful unto God and walk with His Son during this holy time of Lent. We will conclude this morning service with a final prayer for not only the intentions we offered, but also for the living as well as for the deceased. May God be merciful and compassionate and loving to all of us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.